Hello, welcome back to USS Cod's Hidden History, another bit of uh, crazy small tidbit history items that you won't normally hear about in engineering books about fleet submarines. We're in Cod's uh, maneuvering room right here. Uh, these are the uh, the sticks and the cage, and of course, best to, just to say that this area is the gas pedal of the submarine. But we're here not to talk about uh, the electrical distribution panel, but some of the uh, um, features provided for the crew uh, by the designers of the fleet boat. Um, I'm Paul Ferrace, director of the USS Cod Submarine, and it's good to have you back. I'm standing in front of what was Cod's fourth crew head. Uh, in this tiny cubicle, uh, the uh, designers of the Gato class boats, uh, as built by Electric Boat Company, put the fourth head right in this little cabinet. Um, it's not very big. Certainly, you don't walk in and sit down. You back in and pull the door closed. This is an air expulsion head, identical to the one in the forward room that's reserved exclusively for officers. Uh, now, what's unique about the Gato class boats is, uh, in the engineering space here, the maneuvering room, they put the fourth head, probably uh, as a uh, little perk for the electrician's mates. Uh, as it turned out, that wasn't such a great idea. Uh, the engineer's office was just on the other side of the pressure-proof bulkhead here. That little white cabinet, literally the size of a phone booth, was the engineer's office. Now, he had a chair, a small desk, and a typewriter, and nooks and crannies and shelves for uncounted uh, technical manuals and equipment repair logs. Um, on later class boats, the, uh, the engineer's office is flipped in the Baleo class boats uh, to this space, and the aft head that's here is moved into the uh, crew, uh, the after torpedo room where you have crew berthing. And that's kind of the key to the story I'm going to tell. Um, you know, war is hell, and sometimes it smells bad, and we have a unique story that comes from COD 7th Patrol involving the head right here. Now, uh, the electrician's mates uh, that served on the boat told me this story. Um, unlike the three heads uh, forward, this compartment has an air system blowing air in, but not an air system drawing air back into the air system to feed it into the engine room. So whatever happens in this compartment is going to be shared uh, very quickly to everyone here in this small confined space. And uh, one crewman, we don't want to know his name, so for the sake of this uh, discussion, we'll call him Smitty. Smitty was sleeping in the after torpedo room on the seventh patrol and was using this head. And let's just say that Smitty's um, GI system didn't react well to uh, the marvelous cooking on board COD. And it really was good cooking, but something about Smitty uh, just uh, made uh, life miserable for anybody in the immediate vicinity of when he used the head. Now, the electrician's mates who had to stand watch, and we have a great picture here on the, uh, the, uh, the switchboard. I'm going to reach in here, uh, if we can just get in here. This is a wonderful photo of our uh, engine, uh, the, uh, the electrician's mates uh, on duty in our uh, maneuvering room on the 7th patrol. Now, these guys certainly knew Smitty's identity, um, but uh, they, uh, they told me the story. Uh, they asked Smitty very politely, would you please use the enlisted men's heads further forward? Smitty said no. And he, that was a bad decision on his part because they're electricians, mates. And um, they had a megger and uh, they had some copper wire. And more importantly, they had some black paint. Well, they wrapped the back of the horseshoe-shaped black toilet seat with the copper wire, painted it black in case uh, Smitty was an, a, uh, was an observant fellow, but apparently he wasn't, uh, and they connected the copper wire to a megger. And uh, the next time Smitty came in to use the head, uh, they again reminded him, would you please use the heads forward? And again, he told them uh, no. And he entered the compartment, pulled the door closed, sat down on the toilet seat, and they delivered several thousand volts, no amperage, 
uh, into his backside through the toilet seat uh, turned into an electric chair. Uh, the men present told me that the bottom of the door seemed to blow out uh, from uh, an um, involuntary muscle reflex when the voltage hit him. Uh, and he got the idea. Smitty never again used this head. Um, again, as I said, war is hell and, and sometimes it smells bad. Uh, so this became a problem. It was designed as a, as a convenience for the electrician's mates. And it turned out, at least in the case uh, involving Smitty, not to be such a good idea for the electrician's mates. Now, when Cod was placed out of commission in 46 and recommissioned in 1951, a new group of electrician's mates are on duty. And uh, knowing that this is a uh, Gato class boat, uh, they understood that, yes, indeed, the head is here and the engineer's office is in there, uh, unlike Baleo boats where it's flipped. Um, so they got permission from Captain Francis Rich to remove the head. They told him, we need more space for storage uh, of spare parts and logbooks. And since Cod wasn't going to be a frontline combat submarine in her new uh, role as a NATO anti-submarine training platform, uh, the captain agreed that uh, we could get by with three heads. So uh, this small uh, compartment becomes basically another storage locker. They added some shelves. Now down in, on the deck here, we still have the uh, telltale octagonal tiles uh, from a, uh, a head space. We also have uh, uh, the blank where the toilet would mount. Uh, but all of the overboard discharge uh, valves have been blanked uh, by the Navy in 1951. Uh, and we, uh, we become a three, uh, three head submarine. Um, but that's just a little bit of history that uh, we want to share with you. So remember to hit the like button, subscribe, uh, give us a thumbs up, and we'll bring you more oddball history in the future. Thank you.